Uh, I'm delighted to say Maeve de Barca is with us to help continue our build up to the World Cup which is 24, 48 hours away this time 48 hours we're all going to be uh, getting prepared for Ireland versus Australia how are you feeling about it all? Excited at this stage yeah looking forward to it it feels like a long time coming obviously since last October they qualified and um, there's been a lot of build up and talk about it so I'm sure um, the girls will be looking forward to just getting out on the pitch on Thursday uh, as we get closer, we start to get more concerned about the fact that the home nation are bloody good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's the thing. I think everyone is enjoying the build up and, and all that, like I said. But then when it comes down to it and the reality of who we're going to face on Thursday, one night it over there and uh, morning here, it's uh, slightly daunting, I suppose, when you look at it. They've Australia qualified for seven of the last eight World Cups or the only eight World Cups. And obviously it's our first rodeo and they have a good track record. Like even last Friday, they beat France 1-0. And um, before that, back in um, April, they, they beat England um 2-0 and that was ending like England's 30 game unbeaten streak so they're definitely a force to be reckoned with How important is it that we have actually played them in a friendly and done well against them in the last couple of years? Well that's the thing yeah we beat them 3-2 in Tallinn in September 21 so that'll it'll give them confidence the Irish girls but at the same time only 10 of the girls who were in the squad that day who played are in, in the squad now so it's a very changed squad at the same time and Australia as well I think they're coming to a bit of form at this stage um, they did well in the in the Olympics they finished fourth I think so they're they're kind of on a bit of a streak although they did have a disastrous uh, exit in the, the um, Asian Cup there and they they were knocked out uh, very early on so in the, are in the quarterfinals so um, they're a bit of a mixed bag, but I think they're coming to form at a good time, Australia, which obviously isn't ideal from an Irish perspective. They're quite terrifying as well, Maeve, on the, on the counter attack. Like I know Marissa Shivas kind of spoke of that. They've been watching videos of the Australian team, and but I guess the, the the alternative to that is that this is a very defensive minded Irish setup. So it it's something different that the Australians maybe aren't quite used to coming up against. That's it, exactly. I mean, obviously we play five at the back, but in reality it's going to be seven at the back with the two sitting uh, midfielders have been tucked in beside them. So, um, yeah, I don't think we're going to give them much chance to exploit in behind us. Um, you know, they do have a lot of, they have a lot of speed and power up front. So it'll be difficult if we push on, I suppose, but I wouldn't expect that we will. I think we'll just be sitting in, in that defensive low block as we as we all know it at this stage and just try to counter-attack and aim for set pieces as well. What about the, about the occasion? Because we've, we've spoken about those moments in advance of the game, the national anthem, the 80,000 people, Australian home advantage as well, albeit there'll be a lot of Irish there. Um, like, Is that an occasion that, that might get to any of the Irish players or, or is, uh, is it just a case of a lot of them play in the WSL, they're used to playing in big stadiums, some of them have Champions League experience, um, so surely they'll be used to it. It remains to be seen, really. We won't know until kickoff how they're going to deal with it. Um, it's not something you can prepare for. Like I said, Australia have already been in World Cups before, so that side of it, they, they have dealt with. Um, they're, they're facing their own sort of battling that they're, they're trying to deal with the weight of an expectation of a nation, too. So from that side, um, Australia will feel pressure. But yeah, for the Irish girls, it's, it's going to be huge. Like I said, it's the first World Cup debut. So, um, well, they've played in you know, stadiums with their clubs and that it, it is on a different scale the only thing that would kind of compare used to be the games against the US in terms of crowd and, and atmosphere but uh, in reality they're always friendly so they go over there too so it's not the same mindset so just um, I suppose I hope that the girls can rise to the occasion really Yeah like there's every chance that whatever nerves the Irish players are feeling the Australians are feeling that too and it's their ability to feed off their own crowd versus be slightly intimidated with the responsibility of opening the tournament and you know creating that sense of occasion and momentum behind the the support and galvanising the country because that, that like has it's overwhelmed exactly, teams I mean the Exactly. You've seen um, teams in the past where they've just not performed well, maybe when, when it comes around to it and they're the host nation. And obviously we hope that that's going to be the case with Australia on Thursday. And um, Ireland, it's, it's, just, it's just a matter of 
of trying to ignore the crowd and I think once you step over the white line you do block it out I mean it's it's always it's just a letter be 11 and um, you, you know you play your game like you would any other game I know it's, it is difficult but like you said the girls are used to the cameras and all that at this stage from playing with um, in high profile clubs and I think as a player I know whenever I've I played it against um, you know sold out stadiums in America or that you do you do try to forget about it anyway and, and you, you do to an extent because you, you have your own job to do and that's what they'll be focused on in training this week they'll all know by the time kickoff comes exactly what they need to do on the pitch and I think that's what they'll be focusing on more so than the hype and the balls around it. Maybe we asked you to, to pick your starting eleven or your expected starting eleven for the game against Australia and you've gone with the same team that was picked for the game against France um, which I think everybody expects at this stage it's kind of like Vera basically told us that that's what she was going to do exactly and uh, the nine seconds of footage that came out against Colombia I, I tried to zoom in on the grainy um, video and that was the same team as well that started against Colombia um, which she did say would be the starting team so yeah I, I can't foresee any kind of changes um, unless they're you know, God forbid there is a last minute injury or something, but um, I wouldn't expect there to be any changes and I fully expect Denise to be playing as well. Lily Ag, fairly close maybe to that 11 as well, Miv? I think so, yeah. I think before, I suppose a couple of weeks ago, it would have been a toss-up between her and Rusha Littlejohn, I think. Um, they're very similar players and they sit into that hold in mid-spot and um, I think she she could see herself as un- unlucky having uh, or to miss out if she does miss out but I think she'll still um, play play a big role in the tournament because um, I think you know if one of the midfielders was to get injured she'd be the first I think to spring from the bench and, and likewise I think Amber Barrett would also be kind of waiting in the wings as well to get her opportunity um, although again yeah Vera just doesn't tend to make that many subs so um, but, but I think the two of those will be vital you know if we were to talk about kind of a 13 that would be likely to be seen a lot of game time maybe you could throw Abby Larkin or, or that in the mix or the likes of Anya Gorman to come on and close out a game hopefully if we're winning you know uh, when we're winning hopefully um, she might come on and you know do a job defensively with her experience but also the likes of Diane Caller there who can do similar So France beat us 3-0 obviously um, Katie McKay went off after half an hour with uh, 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 you know precautionary withdrawal is that in any way a concern? I suppose it is. I mean, I know Isi came on and she did do a job, but I think, it, you know, she possibly, a couple of the goals she, she may have looked back on. And, but again, that's a learning curve and it's good that these um, things happened against France. I think they'll iron out all those kind of defensive um, frailties before the game on, on uh, Thursday. But yeah, it was slightly worrying, I suppose, that we seemed to crumble a little bit. But I don't know, you know, you wonder was a direct impact of Katie going off or would the game have turned in that direction anyway? But there's no doubt that in Katie McCabe and Denise O'Sullivan, they're, they're standout world-class players, you know, and they are um, the ones, I suppose, the ironically, they're the ones that we had the two injury scares about, you know. I think um, maybe there was a bit of panic when it was Denise who went down. I'm not sure if it was a another player or a squad player who who had went down whether it be have been the same kind of um I suppose the same attention on it. Well there wouldn't have been, there's no doubt about that. But um I think it's just good now that I suppose all things go well that Vera has a full squad to pick from and um, that's all we can hope for really. By all accounts may if the Australian media seem to be picking up on Ireland Ireland's supposed physicality and that seems to be the the word that, that's been used on the back pages of a lot of the Australian uh, newspapers it's, it's funny because even after I think I said this after the France game as well you almost would have liked to have seen more physicality from Ireland in, in the French game I think it, the point was made as well in, in the analysis afterwards Denise O'Sullivan picks up a, a yellow card late on you don't want to encourage players to pick up yellow cards but it showed a bit of bite and maybe the, the first bit of bite in the whole game so could we even be more physical possibly? I think so and that's what we've you know always kind of had our game about is that physicality hardness kind of tough to beat and that mentality but I think that will all shine through. I mean, when the when there's World Cup points on the line, everything changes. You know, um, obviously the friendly against France is also the last uh, time you know on the home soil before they head off to Australia. So you know, they're in the back of people's minds. They also don't want to get injured in in those games. Whereas when it comes to Australia, it's just all or nothing really. There's no, there's going to be no holding back um, from the girls at all. And um, like I said, there Denise brings a lot of physicality. So does does Rusha. The girls at the back as well, Nifai and Louise Quinn. You know they never shy out of a tackle. So 
I think um, I think we'll really see that come to the fore against Australia and um, I'd say it's just a lot of talk really they have to talk about something so I think they'll be well able to match it you know that the Australians they're, they won't be shying out any um, battles either I'd say so uh, I think a lot of people will be familiar with Sam Kerr she is obviously um, one of the poster children of the entire World Cup and has been for a long period of time their all time top goal scorer double winner with Chelsea last season who else should Ireland fans be concerned about from an Australia perspective I think uh, beside her up top now is Caitlin Ford who of course is our, our um, Katie McCabe's teammate at Arsenal and she's sort of moved recently more recently into a central role alongside Kerr. She usually plays on the wing with Arsenal, but I think she's really effective for Australia kind of in that central partnership with Kerr, who, of course, they're going to try to get a lot of ball to. So she'll definitely be one to watch. And I suppose from her perspective, maybe like that with all the attention being on Kerr, she's kind of has a bit more of a free role to operate and without that kind of um, weight of expectation on her shoulders. And there's also... So yeah, we'd have to talk about Ellie Carpenter too. She's one of the wor- best, um, sorry, best right backs in the world. She got injured there, unfortunately, to the, to the ACL in the 2022 um, Champions League final, of course, for Leon. So she's only 23 at the moment. She was like the youngest player in the ever to play in the Olympics in 2016. So she's really going to be a force to be reckoned with. She's already played in, in um, USA and um, obviously now got that big move to Leon when she was only 20. So she's really, I think going to be well again hopefully not from an Irish perspective but I think she will be one of the, the standout stars for Australia in this World Cup it's probably her time to shine really and I suppose then another player might be um, we'd have to have with the Irish interest I suppose would be Mary Fowler her dad um, and granddad of course are Irish so she people might remember she scored two goals when they played um, in Tala they lost to Tala that time and she came off the bench as well and, and scored uh, the winner against France on Friday so she's really an impact sub and I think she could make um, a big difference her I think her brother and sister actually played underage for Ireland um, already so there was a bit of kind of I suppose controversy of who, who, who she would play for herself but obviously that's um, she, she's playing she's playing for the Aussies now at this stage so that'll be a really interesting I suppose thing to see in that she's going to be playing, playing against us Maeve what's your prediction? <laughs> it's always a difficult one and it is hard to kind of get away from the hype and the the hopes I suppose that we have but I think it'll be a very very difficult game um, you might see a narrow loss but I'm going to go for a draw a nil all draw to start us off hopefully it'd be great to get a point on the board I really would and um, the girls in the way then looking forward to the rest of the, the group games and hopefully the rest of the tournament Great stuff thanks for being with us this morning Maeve cheers Thank you.